I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Hey, 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 what's up, world? Welcome to this edition of I Mix What I Like Live here at Black Power Media. Again, I'm Jared Ball, happy to be hosting once again. Good morning, good morning. Uh, Welcome back. Good to see all of you who are here already. Good morning, good morning, Ricky, Shirley, Lisa, Sugar Booger, James, KD, Skittles. (laughs) Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining me and uh, to those who are going to show up in a few, uh, good morning to you. Those who will see this in the replay, good day, greetings to you. And, uh, thanks for helping me and us hold it down until the remix crew fully convenes or reconvenes next Tuesday, which is our weekly Monday. (laughs) Um, and by the way, shout out to the remix, uh, crew. Uh, and BPM Collective. Um, very excited and proud of what we've all been uh, doing and accomplishing uh, and helping to expand here and uh, the public sphere. We're helping to uh, create and expand. Uh, I mean it when I say on Twitter, there's no morning show like it. Uh, I've never seen a morning show like it. Uh, I can't imagine that there has ever been one. Uh, shout out to those who have done one or are doing one that we may not know about. But uh, as far as I'm aware, nothing has been done like that. So please spread the word. As far as this morning goes, please do uh, same thing. Invite some friends, foes, colleagues, comrades. Uh, not quite the full boom bat breakfast, but a little something, something. Uh, I'm going to get into uh, something I've been waiting for for a little bit and uh, um, uh, figure might as well do now since uh, uh didn't have any guest book for this morning uh but what we're going to do is is air the 10 minute uh panel discussion that i was on a few weeks ago with dr barbara ransby with mark lamont hill uh on his uh upfront program and uh, then talk a little more about reparations uh beyond what was discussed in that in that short uh or 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 excerpted i should say because obviously they don't air the entire thing they you know they cut it down a little bit but uh, I'd like to expand that conversation with with you all uh, and uh, using a recent uh, essay from my man, Dr. Conadu, uh, which I think, uh, you know, perfectly adds some diaspora context um, and uh, uh, gives us something to, to work with. So I'm going to go over that with you all after uh, the, the panel. And then uh, I'm, I'm thinking we'll have a little time. So folks want, um, I'm, you know, there's a number of things. Obviously, uh, I'm happy to get into the chat with you all a little bit and comments, uh, get your responses and thoughts. But then maybe we can do a couple of other things while we have at least a little bit of time, uh, get some feedback uh, from you on uh, what you think about uh, BPM so far, maybe get some suggested movies to review, topics, guests. We can get into that a little bit later. Uh, I do definitely want to uh, thank and encourage others to uh, join uh, MUD0692 for becoming a new member and invite others to do the same. If you haven't already, uh, click the join button Uh, at minimum, like, share, subscribe. But if you if you can, uh, if you're able to and interested uh, joining now would be timely because Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern for members only here on, on Black Power Media, Media is going to be, for me, a sort of bucket list interview discussion and something I'm not aware that has ever taken place. Uh, and I'm not aware that it could could have ever taken place. This is a, a certain particular moment in history where a discussion like this can actually happen. Uh, and that is a, a discussion uh, titled... Uh, at least part one of uh, the Black Liberation Army soldier stories, uh, where we're going to have a roundtable with Daruba bin Wahad, Blood McCreary, and Sekou Odinga. And that's sort of the point I'm getting at. Uh, Sekou Odinga only recently released a few years ago. 
uh, and uh, uh, having been imprisoned for I can't even remember how many decades, but um, for having, you know, in part been accused of helping the liberation of Asada Shakur. Uh, so we'll he we'll hear from them. Uh, our our sort of co-founding uh, crew, Renegade Culture, Kamal and Kalanji are going to join me and uh, as, sort of as the host discussants. Uh, but really, we're obviously there to hear from them. So we invite you to check that out. You don't want to miss that uh, 11 a.m. Eastern right here. Black Power Media uh, soldier story, Black Liberation Army. Similarly, by the way, uh, shout out to Renegade Culture. We just taped their their uh, episode uh, last night. That's going to air later today, given that this is, of course, the beginnings of our Black Power Media Dope Fridays. And um uh, uh, a, a fun and uh, yeah, fantastic uh, discussion. Uh, even a little, little, little bit of debate about the, about hip hop history and politics. Um, but it was it was great. So I look forward to 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 seeing that air tonight and seeing what I missed, what was taped outside of my presence. Uh, so please uh, tune in tonight at nine p.m. Eastern for that. I, I just finished completing, uh, you know, wrapping up. The Last Dope Intellectual with Dr. CBS, episode 16, which will air tonight at 7 p.m. I mean, she's killing it. And then, you know, and had had the good Dev Springer on and for, for multiple segments. So uh, a little special treat there. You, again, an another not uh, can't miss uh, episode tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, and I'm sure it's can't miss, although it's not something I have any preview or 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 privy to in advance. Uh, tonight's 5 p.m. or 5.30 p.m. Eastern uh, airing of uh, uh, Luke Mon Nation. But I'm sure it's going to be fire as always. Uh, I just don't happen to have have any preview on it. Um, but uh, uh, those that I do have, it's going to be a great night. So I also similarly finished taping the other day with the Black Miss podcast crew, something that's coming later uh, or earlier later. I think it's going to come right at the beginning of next month uh, because they had already taped part one of of you know addressing the myth of black wall street in tulsa given that this is the this you know, well you know may 31st uh i think launch is officially the 100th anniversary they didn't they haven't dropped that yet but i they let me hear uh, hear it to prepare for part two which i was a part of which will air I, i'm 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 not sure exactly when they're going to drop but i mean i'm just very I'm happy to be able to contribute a little bit and I uh, haven't talked a little bit about it before here, but um, uh, an essential myth to bust uh, in terms of what was actually going on in Tulsa. And then not only what happened, but it's reverberating impact um, and the, the associated myths. So uh, definitely don't want to miss that either. Oh man, did the lag monster come back at me? Anyway, so so um uh, uh shout out to the Black Miss crew. Uh very much uh, honored to have been a part of that and look forward to when that drops and I don't think again it's stuff that that, that folks don't want to miss either. All right. Uh okay, so that's it. So so let's turn to let's get to to, to this issue of reparations and uh I'm I'll restate it. Um I wonder if that was anyway. Um, if yeah, I want to let me just state you know, as we turn to this question of of, of reparations. I want to just I'm gonna I'll, I'll come back and restate it, but I just want to sort of clarify from the beginning where where the the point I'm I'm coming from and what I would like to to what I'm advocating and putting forth for for our conversation. And simply, uh, my point is that reparations, um, uh, it's not a question of are they due. It's, it's, that, that's not a, it's, it's not a question of are they due. It's a question for me of what role is the, the not only what form are reparations meant to take, but what role, really for me the issue is what role reparations are meant to play or are playing in our political discourse. So, uh, 
Origins and the arguments of sincere of the sincere notwithstanding, reparations to me has become one of the more prominent issues used for mass coalescence, distraction, and liberalization. Many of us are encouraged to coalesce around ultimately small claims and goals, but not for organizing to assume political power, which must be our goal. Not political power in terms of running for mainstream political office, but the true meaning of political power, controlling the processes of society and ultimately the ways in which wealth is defined, created and distributed. So that in short is 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 my issue and uh, um, or, or the, the approach that I'm trying to bring when asked for my views on reparations. Uh, and that's the perspective that you'll see me attempting to, to, in, uh, to engage here uh, as well. Uh, shout out, good morning, Tafari. I agree, our BTEC discussions of reparations were everything, which is why the essay that Dr. Conadu recently published that we're going to use after this 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 uh, review of the panel uh, discussion is, is why I'm doing it, because I appreciate you saying that, but you're absolutely right. And our, our Blacklash Collective, uh, I think, um, did very well on this issue, quite frankly. And uh, Dr. Conadu, of course, uh, uh, chief pun intended among them. So um, let's get to this. Uh, so this was taped, uh, well, I don't know, a couple months ago and then aired a couple weeks ago. I can't exactly remember on Mark Lamont Hill's upfront program uh, on Al Jazeera. Uh, and so I'm going to play you the entire what a clip that aired. It's only about 10 minutes and then we'll come back uh, and talk about what uh, more of it uh and uh, and get your 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 impressions and, and and views as well so let's check this out that was the promise that was made to newly freed african americans in 1865 at the end of the u.s Civil War, War, a form of reparations for the atrocities of slavery but it didn't take long for the promise to be broken just a year later president andrew johnson reversed the order leaving the formerly enslaved with no form of restitution some argue that this marked the beginning of the contemporary racial wealth gap in the United States. Today, according to some estimates, 40 acres and a mule will be the equivalent of about two and a half trillion dollars. Congress is currently reviewing a bill on reparations first introduced in 1989 known as H.R. 40, which would set up a commission to examine remedies for slavery, such as payments from the government to descendants of enslaved Africans. So should reparations take place? And if so, what would that look like? Joining us to discuss this are Barbara Ransby, professor of African-American studies at the University of Illinois at Chicago and author of Making All Black Lives Matter, and Jared Ball, professor of communication and Africana studies at Morgan State University and the author of The Myth and Propaganda of Black Buying Power. I want to thank you both uh, for joining me in the arena. Uh, Barbara, I want to start with you. Uh, what does it mean when we say reparations? And I know that's a broad question. People have different ideas about what that means, but can you explain a little bit in your estimation of how, what reparations is or what it should be and, and how it would work? Yeah, I mean, I think that's the area of, of debate and, and struggle, right? Um, there are a number of models for reparations, all of them limited and problematic, uh, if you will. Uh, we think of reparations as repair, as redress for past harm and past grievance. So. Um, the reason I think the reparations demand is a useful one in, in the constellation of uh, tactics that we might use in the Black Freedom Movement is that it really does, at the, on the bottom line, indict racial capitalism, which was built on the backs of, uh, of Black people with stolen land and stolen labor. Uh, it is something that we still do not confront. It is uh, you know, a, a part of a very bloody history that, um, that a whole... Uh, elaborate narrative of American triumphalism, you know, uh, covers over. So, so I think it's a way to both expose racial capitalism as well as uh, confront some of the material realities uh, of, of white supremacy uh, today. Jared, you have said, and, and I want to begin here because, you know, sometimes we see in mainstream media the reparations debate, and it becomes the person who supports reparations and represents like 80% of the Black community. And then there's that, there's the conservative person who's propped up uh, to represent the infinitesimal number of Black people who actually oppose it. Um, and that's not what we're doing here. You begin from the place of saying Black people deserve reparations. You're concerned about whether reparations uh, would ultimately be uh, more damaging than beneficial as a tactic or a strategy. Can you talk a little bit uh, about what you mean when you say that? 
Well, sure. Uh, to the extent uh, that any issue can be turned on its side and, and made conservative, this is certainly one of them. And uh, I think in many ways, the reparations argument has been welcomed uh, by conservative uh, segments of uh, the political and media apparatus, even the academic apparatus in the United States, um, because it, it doesn't challenge capital. It allows for, in many ways, what we saw after the election of Barack Obama, it allows for much of white America to simply say, well, we can wipe our hands of, of, of these issues and move on. What I think should be the primary concern for any group, any oppressed group, and no more among them than, than uh, black people in the United States, that is the assumption of political power. And we need to be organizing for uh, a, a change of this society in ways that would make this conversation moot. Um, the call for reparations has been going on, as you noted in your intro, since, you know, uh, in some ways for a long time and officially, at least within the halls of Congress in terms of this H.R. 40 since 1989. And it has gone nowhere, uh, largely because the society not only is bent on, uh, you know, accumulating wealth from the, the extraction of labor and particularly black labor in this country, uh, but also because there's no no will among the the you know roughly two thirds of the voting population that would be required to start passing the kinds of legislation that would start redistributing wealth just to Black Americans when in fact we see the society doesn't even want to redistribute even pennies back to its own white citizens even in the in a moment of COVID crisis. So that's really what I think. I think we need to be thinking much bigger anyway in terms of debt cancellation, redistribution of the gr gross domestic product, all of that kind of stuff. So. But can I can I just respond to Jared? You know, but it doesn't have to be either or. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the, all of what you say is is true, and every reform demand we make is co-optable. Um, every reform demand is limited. Uh, but you know, this is a reform demand. If we see it as a revolutionary demand, we're misguided. But in the context of a reform demand, it does have the exp uh, the potential to expose uh, racial capitalism because what it says is that these, uh, the, the bloody beginnings of this country, that, that American capitalism was built with stolen labor uh, and stolen land, and that, that it indicts it for that in a very, very profoundly and uh, profound and fundamental way. And to do that disrupts a whole narrative, I think, that justifies capitalism in, 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 in the present day. Um, if it is our only strategy is problematic, if it's a strategy that doesn't factor in class disparities in the black community and the role of black elites, it's a problem. But if it doesn't do that, like any other reform, it, it provides an opportunity to, uh, uh, to provide some material relief to our people who are indeed suffering. Uh, and it provides the opportunity to uh, discursively indict uh, the you know, capitalist system, which I think we both are, are critics of and spent much of our lives um, seeking to dismantle. Jared, you said something that's fascinating and that I think may get you in trouble, at least on the Internet, if, you know, as, as real a place as that might be. Uh, you said that tactically, if you want to get reparations, it should, it should be collective and not specific uh, to any one group, because, quote, you could argue that white working people have a history of being exploited. Indigenous people have been exploited. Latinos have been exploited. There are people who are going to say to you and who have said to you that this deflects from the issue that black Americans were enslaved and that we need to have a conversation and public policy that is targeted to them. And to lump all those exploited people together is to do a disservice to the descendants of enslaved Africans here in the United States. What do you say to that? First of all, I say that that's a logical and sound response to my personal critique and suggestion. I get that. Um, I'm not so, so and, and usually the response to my suggestion is that is often at least as you pointed out, to suggest that I'm not in defense or support of black people getting reparations uh, or the particular uh, an individual and specific struggle that black people have suffered here in this country. That's not at all the, the case. Again, my point is just tactically, uh, tactically speaking. We should be focused on something bigger like, hmm. like a debt jubilee. Like, let's cancel debt. Imagine if uh, your student loan debt is wiped out, your, your Medicare and med well, medical coverage is entirely covered, uh, you, you know, schooling is free, you know, all of this, you know, if all of these basic minimums are just caught up to in terms of what is, you know, the case for much of the so-called advanced world, uh, then we're ahead you of know, the, the next level of what black people could get reparatively would be even, I think, even stronger. And, and the, the ability to politically organize for more would be even 
more advanced and stronger. So that's all I'm simply trying to, to, to suggest that it's it's a tactical question, not one uh, of of, of des deserving of merit. Or, right. Yeah. Merit. And, Thank uh, you. Yeah. All that all that's not mutually exclusive, though, is it? I mean, you're still asking the you know, no, no. In the context of reform, but, but, but you're still point, asking the federal government. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I, what, you're right. What I'm, but I'm really what I'm arguing for is an assumption of political power that would make a request to the federal government moot in the same way that those who who handed themselves trillions last summer to make up for the lack of consumer spending among those of us in a, in a, in a COVID crisis were able to do. If you have political power, you just redistribute the nation's wealth to where it's needed and those yeah. who need it the most yeah. will get it. And that's sort of really the kind yeah. of focus that I'm talking Barbara, about. So yeah. for instance, so, yeah, sorry, to get Barbara a chance yeah, to, that's to read a yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, and that's a revolutionary vision, right? Which which we share. We're not there yet. So I think you know when we talk about uh, tactically, you know, there are things that we might demand tactically that we know are not realizable in the framework of the current system. It serves a certain function. It serves to mobilize people. It serves to raise consciousness. It serves to expose certain contradictions, et cetera. So so tactically, there are demands that are made all the time that we think are not likely to be won in their totality. So. Yeah. You know, Jared he makes the argument that there's conservative elements that want to embrace uh, reparations, but reparations has been resisted also, as you pointed out. You know, even the discussion of reparations has been resisted, you know, since uh, Conyers brought up H.R. 40. And in 2001, uh, uh, right before the 9-11, in Durban, the two issues that U.S. and Israel walked out on were not as Palestine. One was Palestine. Uh, but the other was reparations. And so I think it does have a radical potential. Uh, it doesn't automatically become a radical demand, but it does have a radical potential both for material uh, support for people suffering, but also to um, expose the corruption of racial capitalism. So so that's why I think it's useful. I don't think it's a panacea. So Absolutely. I think that's where I live. And I know there's so much more to cover here. This is a very nuanced and complicated topic and we'll make sure you have you have you back to talk about it even more but i want to thank you both for joining me in the arena barbara ransby all right everybody so anyway the discussion got actually uh cut actually more than i remember uh, now that i saw it uh, again uh more than i remembered initially there was a lot uh, at least some uh because uh uh professor ransby at one point brought up the 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 um example of evanston illinois and the payments to some black residents of uh, somewhere between 10 and 20 thousand dollars for housing um and i just tried to assert that that's that is something that is at bare minimum uh, a band-aid um, response to to centuries of oppression and should not be considered reparations and by defining it reparations uh in any way uh, further makes my point about the issue redirecting and redefining our own politics rightward and more conservatively um, so before I move on, just very quickly, um, uh, Boscore777, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing anything. Just to be clear, my argument, your, the comment here that, that that's the problem, all of these discussions assume that there is some sort of democracy. Actually, my point um, is the exact opposite. I'm assuming there is no democracy and that there is, a, a, a again, a settler colonial imperial problem happening here. And that that's why the the more popular traditional forms of appealing for reparations through H.R. 40, SB, I think, 1083 or whatever, um, the can't work. That was the point I was trying to make there that that the country won't even give appropriate relief to white citizens in a in a crisis much less vote at, at two-thirds minimum that would be required to redistribute uh, wealth just to black people because in part not only is this not a democracy but the wealth that's being created requires that it be extracted and redistributed so um the only other point that i would wanted that i wanted to uh make uh, that i couldn't make even in that discussion even in the the full version is that when Professor Ransby 
in, 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 even in that clip, twice responded to my point by saying something to the effect that it doesn't have to be either or. Or that they don't that that our arguments don't have to be mutually exclusive, and my point is, uh, but the issue is made either or or mutually exclusive by the almost exclusive and incessant incessant focus on um, ten uh, uh, HB forty or uh, uh, something like what happened in Evanston as being de defined as reparations, because those conversations, those approaches preclude and prohibit the versions of the conversations that I'm trying to insert or represent or bring into the discussion. They're, they they prohibit, they don't include the either or, and this is sort of a, even a bigger problem, I would argue, between uh, so you know liberalism and genuine revolutionary or at least radical uh, politics that the the liberals uh, uh, consistently say things to the effect that well we need this while we're waiting for that or this uh, and sometimes I think even appropriate things like pending revolution from the Panthers or something like that um, but what I'm suggesting is that that many of these steps for instance, this one of reparations aren't actually steps. They prohibit. So, for instance, the same thing when Obama was elected and people said, well, his so-called Obamacare is a step towards universal health care. No, it's not. It's a, it's, it's a, a rebranding blockade that will never advance us to the next stage. It's meant to, to replace or negate the next stage. So that would have been one, one point. Uh, uh, um, uh, anyway. So, um, but yeah, the, the conversation was pretty short. It was it was edited to even be shorter. And um, uh, so far, we haven't been able to work it out where, because uh, I have, I, even for this morning, again, have invited Dr. Ransby to come on and do just what I did, play that, and then extend the conversation beyond. We haven't, it hasn't been worked out yet. So, uh, and whenever she's ready, we'll come back and do the whole thing. I mean, because obviously what, what's happening today can't be the end of the discussion. So if she's ever willing and able, we'll, we'll happily do that or have other forms of discussions, reparations. I mean, it doesn't, you know, all right. So, so uh, that said, I did want to also um, uh, work with you, work through with you all this recent piece from my dear brother and comrade, uh, Dr. Kwesi Conadu uh published uh uh in the conversation uh titled what the u.s can learn from africa about slavery reparations uh, came out may 6th uh, of this year so there there are a few things that, that uh, about this th this piece that uh um i'd like us to uh discuss a little bit does it work better if it's i think it's better yeah no that's not the one that's that's the one but i think we can i think it works better just as well like that um and as you see as, as he starts off here uh the house judiciary committee voted on april 14th 2021 to recommend the creation of a commission to study the possibility of paying reparations to the descendants of enslaved people in the united states and again, even the language of that sometimes, you know, I mean, it, 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 it admittedly kind of makes me laugh. Uh, uh, voted to recommend the creation of a commission to study the possibility of. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> uh, the measure H.R. 40 would establish a 15 person commission to offer a national apology for slavery, study its long term effects and submit recommendations to Congress on how to compensate African-Americans. Again, I, I'm sorry, I can't help but laugh when I read this stuff because, um, you know, apologies, you know, whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, to suggest that there has not been enough study thus far of the long-term effects. Not to say that there can't be more, but to suggest that there has not been enough long-term study of sex is study of the long-term effects um, and not that there haven't been enough submitted recommendations already uh, or examples of reparations payments made not only uh, elsewhere in the world, but even to uh, slave owners <laughs> here in the United States. Uh, 
uh, we have plenty of examples uh, to, to, to draw from. Uh, anyway. Uh, but as he continues, uh, uh, does does Brother Connor do? Um, but a closer examination of the actual reparations efforts illustrates the limits of programs solely focused on financial restitution. Uh, in South Africa, uh, and by the way, so he goes through several parts of the, throughout the continent of Africa to to give several examples, uh, which I think is 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 uh, uh, you, you know a nice and and helpful uh, thing for us. So so Conradu writes in South Africa, Nelson Mandela and his ruling party, the African National Congress, created a Truth and Reconciliation Commission in 1995 upon coming to power. The commission investigated human rights crimes during nearly five decades of apartheid, the system of le legislation that upheld segregationist laws and perpetuated racist violence. So one thing, uh, w when when we catch up with with, with, with uh, Dr. Conadu again, I want to ask him about his phrase in, in 1995 upon coming to power. Uh, to what extent did the ANC come to power and what form did that power take, um, given that... Uh, they controlled no military, controlled no banking, uh, uh, gave up arms, uh, more or less exposed in some way, I think, uh, people like Chris Hani to assassination, uh, and left a situation by where I got to witness at the Africana Studies and Research Center, uh, uh, a South African brother uh, go in on Desmond Tutu for for saying that things were worse. Um, so anyway, but as as Dr. Conantu does point out, um, the commission also established a reparations program rep recommending in its 2003 final report that victims of, of apartheid receive roughly 3,500 U.S. dollars over six years. <laughs> I mean, you got to be kidding. <laughs> you got to be kidding. And as I pointed out before, comparisons here in the United States to Jews and Japanese are, are I think, similarly uh, woeful, given if we pay attention and go back even to our interview with, with Norman Finkelstein or just look at his book, uh, The Holocaust Industry, uh, Jews, for whatever relative power they're supposed to have in the world, uh, largely got uh, nothing. Um, the, the actual survivors, that is, of uh, the Nazi genocide uh, got nothing. And the the creation of the state of Israel was not to benefit Jews, uh, but U uh, U.S. and Western imperialism. But anyway, uh, and the Japanese got what I think twenty thousand dollars after being uh, removed from billions of dollars of uh, worth of uh, uh, of land worth billions of dollars in natural resources. Okay, uh, but the commission stipulated that only those who had testified on the commission to the commission about apartheid injustices about twenty one thousand people could claim reparations. So you had to testify to get reparations. Some three and a half million Black South Africans suffered under apartheid rule. So only twenty one thousand even got. Um, Mandela's successor, Thabo Mbeki, issued a one-time $3,900 uh, payment in 2003. But what, as he points out, does Dr. Kona do, today, South Africa is the world's most unequal society, according to the World Bank. Whites make up the majority of wealthy elites, while half of the Black South African population lives in poverty. Dismissing the wider social and economic damage caused by apartheid, high income inequality, unreturned land seized by whites, poor community infrastructure has kept millions who suffered violence from qualifying as victims. Uh, they may never see reparations. But don't worry, because uh, he does go on to Sierra Leone uh, and where he says, uh, without reading the entire piece here, uh, after interviewing survivors of the Sierra Leone Civil War, the nonprofit Peace Research Institute Frankfurt, uh, let me show, let me pull up where, where it is on here, concluded in 2013 that Sierra Leone's reparations program failed. It pointed to the high numbers of victims, limited funding on public and public health epidemics like Ebola that made reparations less a priority. Uh, 
In other African countries, survivors of colonial atrocities have sought redress through the courts. In 2013, Kenyan survivors of British colonial atrocities brought a legal suit to the British high courts demanding reparations. The British government recognized that Kenyans were subject to torture and other forms of ill treatment at the hands of the colonial administration and agreed to pay 19.9 million pounds, 27.6 million dollars in compensation to some 5,000 elderly survivors. But the government stalled payments and Kenyans later demanded more uh, than what was offered. A similar court case in Germany demanding reparations for the Germans 1904 to 1908 massacre of the Herero people in colonial Namibia remains contested and negotiations over payments and other forms of redress continue. Um, he goes on to talk a little bit about the African Union. Uh, saying in 2019, the African Union, a regional body made up of 55 African countries. Uh, some of us see it as the sort of uh, defanged, depoliticized uh, rebirth or, or, or replacement of the OAU. Uh, defined reparative justice as redress for losses suffered under any circumstances where human rights have been violated. Much of the African Union's thinking aligns with the ten uh, with the Caribbean-based CARICOM Reparations Commission's 10-point reparations plan established in 2013. It includes debt cancellation for Caribbean countries built on colonial slavery and the right of African descendants worldwide to return to an African homeland should they wish to via an internationally supported resettlement program. For these groups, reparations isn't just about money. It's a plea for collective restoration to retrieve something on behalf of people who lost their labor or life to powerful white governments and institutions. Through slaving, slaving and colonial rule, Africa lost people, but the continent also lost skilled labor, creativity, and innovations. Those benefits were transferred to colonial societies, uh, and their recovery remains at stake for Africa and Africans African descended people worldwide. Okay. Um, so I've linked to that article and to the to the previous video in the show notes for this video uh, for you all to, to review at your, your leisure further uh, beyond this conversation. Um, Uh, and I appreciate that Dr. Conadu points out uh, that there is uh, that there are claims and interests for reparations that go beyond simple, uh, and I don't even mean to say simple, necessary or 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 legitimately uh, desired financial payments. Uh, but for me, the issue still remains that a focus should be on organizing for political power and at minimum debt cancellation, decarceration and redistribution of GDP. That for me uh, are, you know, whether we're talking about reparations or even an electoral political platform for uh, a voting block or party to uh, um, aspire to. And again, again, I apologize for the lagging I'm seeing. Uh, and again, I'm not understanding how it's even occurring, but uh, I don't know how much more Internet I could drive to this, this situation here. But anyway, uh, um, but those are those are the three bare minimums for me. And, and, and really the point being that uh, what what as I read through Dr. Conadu's essay again, uh, this this issue of political power is the primary concern that the the ongoing neo-colonial relationship that uh, African nations have to the global economy in the West is no different than the relationship, no different fundamentally than the relationship black people here have to the United States uh, and to the global economy as well. Uh, and and relatively speaking, political power is about the same at about none. So so no calls for reparations, no no genuinely substantive and meaningful rep reparative project can occur absent actual political power. 
So this isn't about, as I think is often uh, derided by uh, liberals and even those describing themselves as progressives, this is not about some uh, revolutionary uh, purity. It's for me about a, a clarity of political focus, which I don't see. Going back to my point uh, uh, in terms of Dr. Ransby's conversation, that I that I don't see in the reparations conversation, that 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 the dominant narrative has made it an either or situation, where it's either appeals, simple appeals to Congress. Uh, and political figures uh, and for, uh, y- you know, grand statements publicly, uh, but not actually doing the the work of even advocating a reorganization of, of how we engage the electoral political process, which is, of course, the key here, or how we organize a political movement <clears throat> that imposes uh, uh, not only our will, but it assumes political power. So rather than just simply making appeals to politicians who are ultimately beholden to other and more powerfully organized forces, it seems to me our focus should be on organizing, uh, actually doing the harder work of building actual organized movements with that have a certain political clarity and tactical approach that goes for something bigger than some sort of check, which I don't even think is something that is uh, can be seen, as I said earlier, as a step. That's even uh, it's there is no potential step. Um, uh, in fact, I think the argument as currently carried about around reparations, the the narrow range of debate encourages, or rather discourages the kind of focus on the political organizing that I think we need to be doing. It, it, it inhibits it by having us simply say, I support reparations, I support HR 40, but then what? How, who's, going to, who's going to make it a reality uh, um, uh, it, 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 even to get this commission? And who's going to be the 15 person? Anyway, there's so many problems that I have. Anyway, so I mean, those are just some of the points I wanted to 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 initially raise. Uh, let me let me see if there are any comments, responses, critiques in the chat. Um, uh, and if I've missed something, please draw my attention to it. Um, Right. I'm of the opinion that it's just another strategy to the con- in the constellation of strategic planning, like the sister said. Yes, except that to my the point I'm trying to make is that I don't see the the other more radical visions in that constellation. So the constellation of strategic planning is is often limited to the uh, dominant n- narratives uh, uh, in terms of approaches to reparations uh, or again, I don't know, voting for a Democrat. Um, take what you can get, but don't expect a check to fix cap. But again, take what you can get. The assumption is that we can get a check. And I'm saying we can't even get a bill passed to to initiate a study. Again, I want to read that language again. I mean, it's just, it's just, we can't even get a bill passed uh, uh, that would establish a 15-person commission to offer a national apology for slavery, study its long-term effects, and submit recommendations to Congress on how to compensate African Americans. We can't even get that. We haven't even organized politically in 40, 50 years to get that. So so the idea that, that we even can take what we can get to the point where we could even expect or not expect to check da 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 is is what I'm saying is is part of the fantasy. And then meanwhile, I'm arguing that this argument is used as a buffer against more radical visions and calls for um, you know political power or even establishing the standards for rep- what reparations are. For instance, I don't think we should ask for checks. Number one should be debt cancellation. Anything in, in, in my in my limited vision, anything that's not, for instance, a car note should be wiped out. The debt should be wiped out. 
I'm willing, you know, car notes too, but I'm I'm willing to say, you know, you know, uh, a, a car note is is uh anyway. But every you know, but 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 housing, education, obviously medical bills, all of that debt should be wiped out. Step one. Everybody's everybody's debt ledger should be put at zero. Then decarcerate. Abolish prisons, create other forms of 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 of, of more humane ways of addressing uh or defining criminality and what is actual criminality and addressing it, uh, and then redistribute gross domestic product, so that whatever the whatever wealth the nation creates at whatever point in perpetuity is redistributed, in is built in to be redistributed redistributed in ways that there it, it is impossible to be homeless, starving, without medical attention, without gainful and respectful employment, you know, all of that should be built in. Then all the other things can be dealt with internally. How the, the spiritual, cultural, all those pieces can be dealt with uh, internally. Um, Uh, you said take, not receive. Okay, well that's fine, but then that's a different. That's a different. Uh, then we're not talking about reparations, <laughs> and we're having we, now we're having the, another conversation. So that's all good too. That's all good too because reparations is not taking. Um. Uh, 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 you know, assuming political power and redistributing wealth, uh, as was done last summer by the wealthy to the wealthy that's taking um so yeah uh uh, uh appreciate david silberg here please do hit the like button uh hit the join button hit the subscribe button if you can um and if 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 uh i'm not seeing did i miss any questions or, or particular comments in response to anything i've said here please repost or point me to them Otherwise, uh, um, I don't mind wrapping a little early, but I would also be interested in hearing um, anything from you all on uh, anything regarding the channel so far, uh, how we're doing with the channel, uh, suggestions, feedback. Anybody want to discuss any of that? Any, you know, if you if there's anything you'd like to see us uh, do, you know, movie reviews, book reviews, topics, get guests. I'm interested in hearing about that as well. Or anything else, uh, comments, critiques, queries, conundrums, catechisms, cacophony, calumny, consternation, contemplation. Um, let me see here. If you take the average piece of a uh, price of an acre of land in a typical slave state like South Carolina, twenty five hundred dollars, forty acres would be about a hundred thousand dollars. Shouldn't that be a starting point at least? Um, I, not for me so much. And thank you very much, uh, Assassin Murray. Appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. Uh, thank you. And I hope uh, I, I can't really. I hope you. I appreciate the the super chat, but I hope you're also a member and can join us Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern for the members only discussion of Black Liberation Army soldier stories. It's going to be off the hook. But for me, Del El Sendero, no, this is not a this is not for me what I would want the starting point to be, because, again, one, I think it's four white men in the country now own all more land than all black America combined. So I don't know unless there again is political power or public policy that forces a redistribution of that land. Even if you have a hundred thousand dollars, they can't be forced to sell you any land. Uh, and a hundred thousand dollars isn't a, a terrible amount of money. And I don't, and uh, it's not a guarantee going forward that even those who the recipients of that would, would be made whole. 
Uh, and I'm trying to get to the point where we don't have to, it, it, it shouldn't be up to whether or not you get the good plot of land and can work a good business, whether you, you, you live well or sustain. We're all creating $20 trillion annually in this country GDP by paying bills, by shopping, by eating out, by watching our movies, by going to work, by, you know, we create that wealth. So I don't want to have to, I don't, as an initial step, I don't think we should have to do anything else other than receive more of the benefits of the wealth we already create. Not one person has to do one other thing other than receive, because it's all, everything we're already doing creates that wealth. So it just should be redistributed. call-in segment. yeah, <laughs> And this is sort of my point. What white people in South Carolina are going to pass? <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the. by the way, we've, we've talked about it here and, and, and elsewhere, the 2014 uh, Princeton study that, that proved uh empirically that this country is not a democracy and that if the elite don't want it, it doesn't matter how many people in this country want it. The system is set up as such that it, that that it's an oligopolist re, uh, um, arrangement, so that even when a majority of the country wants something, the mechanism through uh, uh, of um, uh, our electoral process doesn't allow for their will to be heard because the 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 bought and paid for politicians end up re, re, uh, only respecting the views of their donor base. We can't compete with their donor base. We're never going to be able to compete with their donor base, which is which is again why uh, when I'm saying assume political power, I don't mean in the the dominant mainstream liberal concept of voting for a democrat or voting for one of the two you know corporate representatives of global capital uh i'm saying we have to do many other things uh uh building our political strength our our our, our um uh political uh, our potential strength i should say uh and again Different approaches to electoral politics, different approaches to social movement building, different approaches to general strikes, to all kinds of things. That that, but eventually for you know to to produce uh, uh, a situation where we have assumed political power, and then new leadership would emerge that would be able to determine. Again, how wealth is defined and where it should go. That's anyway, because all these other steps, which I don't think are, I don't even want to say that word. All of these other uh, um, replacements are not steps leading somewhere that we want to go. There may be steps taking us elsewhere, you know, circumventing uh, our, our ultimate goal, but not getting us to our goal. Yeah, the, that's sort of what I'm saying. The dollar amount is 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 not the the issue. It's it's the power, the control. Because you know, again, you know, the only person I've ever seen to get the buying power issue correct uh, is George Jackson, and his point was they can give you, uh, uh, you know, they can increase uh, your purchasing power or increase your income or uh, increase your salary, and then they just inflate the the prices of goods um, or or to put it differently, they uh, and even Michael Moore has pointed this out. Uh, they they privatize all that should be made public and make you pay for it. So even if you get more in a salary, you have to pay more to get all the things through education or healthcare, etc. That you should get federally, that should be covered. So you you get a bigger check, but then you have to pay more. That's not that's that that doesn't you know, and that's why we are in a situation where we're the name of that Princeton study. Um, uh, that's a good question. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, Princeton. Uh, otherwise, I have to go like really start to look through my 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 computer, my files, and that might take a little. Uh, is this it here? Did I find it that quick? I think I did. I think I did. So let me show you this here, and then I think it'll show take you to the uh, to the actual link. Uh, let me stop sharing that, and let me share. Uh, this here, 
Uh, major study finds the U.S. is, a, is an oligarchy uh, from April of 2014. The U.S. does not represent the interests of the majority of country's citizens, but instead is instead ruled by the those of the rich and powerful. A new study from Princeton Northwestern Universities concluded, uh, and and I actually did once upon a time read this. So here's the report: testing theories of American politics elites. Uh, yeah. Testing theories of American politics, elites, interest groups, and average citizens. Published Cambridge University Press. Um, so that's the title. It's been written up on in a number of um, outlets like this one. So you can get some of the, the at least the headlines. But uh, after sifting through nearly 1,800 U.S. policies enacted in the period uh, and comparing uh, to the expressed preferences of average Americans, 50th percentile of income, affluent Americans, 90th percent of income, and large special interest groups, researchers concluded that the U.S. is dominated by its e economic elite. The peer-reviewed study, which will be taught at the EZ universities in September, says, quote, the central point that emerges from our research is that economic elites and organized groups representing business interests have substantial independent impacts on U.S. government policy, while mass-based interest groups and average citizens have little or no independent influence. Um... Researchers concluded that U.S. government policies rarely align with the preferences of the majority of Americans, but do favor special interests and in lobbying organizations. When a majority of citizens agrees with economic elites and or with dis and or with organized interests, they generally lose. When a majority of citizens disagrees with economic elites and or with organized interests, they generally lose. Moreover, because of the strong status quo bias built into U.S. political system, even when fairly large majorities of Americans favor policy change, they generally do not get it. The positions of powerful interest groups are not substantially correlated with the preferences of average citizens, but the politics of average Americans and affluent Americans sometimes does overlap. This is merely a coincidence, the report says, with the interests of the average American being served almost exclusively, <coughs> excuse me, when it also serves those of the richest 10%. So you get what you want if what you want is what the richest 10% want. That's that's uh, the, the, the short of it. Um, Uh, so again, I, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm for reparations. This is not a question about being for or against reparations. Uh, it's, it's, it, my, my point here is to talk about the way, the ways in which <laughs> the ways in which reparations as a topic limit our political discourse and our political imagination. And I think by uh, pushing uh, largely uh, a fantasy that we can impose ourselves on a currently constituted political apparatus to get them to sign off on redistributing wealth just to black people. I, I can't I, I mean, I can't think of a, a, a greater I can't think of a bigger a fantasy than than that. Um, so. Uh, what are your thoughts on Nicole Hannah Jones not making tenure at UNC? Um, I, it, it, well, my first thoughts, to be frank, I, I should, I should, well, I should start by saying I don't, I don't know enough of the details. I think I've only read one full story on it. Um, but um. Tenure is uh, largely an arbitrary process. Who gets it and who doesn't is is uh, often, you know, the, you can say that there are standards and sometimes there are very clearly delineated standards. But even then, it's often arbitrary. And those that those in power want to get it, get it. And those who don't, don't. I mean, I've seen 
just in my own limited career, I've seen uh, really amazing things happen uh, uh, where people are denied uh, who you would think are Uh, more than qualified and those who I can't imagine have any of the qualifications get it. So I, I, you know, uh, and it seems like there is, uh, um, well, the first thing I'll say is that she did get a five year, you know, she did get a five year contract and at least nominally a chance to earn the tenure. So uh, from what I saw, they were at least claiming she hadn't done enough to earn it. And and we should be clear, uh, you know, and uh, so I look, I know these institutions are racist. I know they're, they're anti-woman, anti-black women in particular. I know that they are, although I think n- numerically black women do better in academia than black men. I have to, I have to, I have to revisit some of the numbers on that too. But, but anyway, it's not that anyway, but that, the, that point is irrelevant in the sense that it's not that anybody's doing well. And I still think black people collectively are less than 1% of, of uh, the nation's PhDs, uh, if I'm not mistaken. That number hasn't gone up too much either, but it's not many if it, anyway. But uh, um, I have to check that number too, but it's not many. So, but, but, the point, but the point I'm getting at is that just because we may know of someone through their popular work doesn't mean that they have uh, legitimately earned or reached the standard at their given institution for tenure. And popular work does not necessarily equate to sound and um, uh, um, copious or quantity, you know, high, you know, high quantity or or highly productive or uh, high amounts of, of scholarship. So, um, and in my own look at the 1619 Project controversy, one of the things I didn't remember reading was that the uh, Pulitzer Prize that that she was given um, was a, a prize in a category for commentary that was newly created for her uh, that didn't previously exist because it was not seen that she had done enough journalistically or um, uh, academically to earn a Pulitzer. Uh, so it was uh, almost seen as a way for the industry to reward itself, given she was, you know, writing for the New York Times and the idea that the New York Times would produce such a massive project that wouldn't win itself a Pulitzer, uh, you know, is seen by some to have, you know, led to them creating a new category for her to, 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 to earn one, to win. Uh, so I honestly don't know. I um, uh, but similar to the Cornell West case, it, it it it's not like she didn't get tenure and she got kicked to the curb. Uh, so in, in many ways, it's it's a it's a a cushy rejection. But um, you know, uh, I mean, I've also experienced myself that that tenure and promotion uh can be used against you so um and tenure does not necessarily mean pay raise how does how does dr cbs do (laughs) so some of these folks get denied and get you know some some nice you know fat checks to not have tenure so i i don't know uh, uh, that would be my my the best answer I could give on that one at the moment, but but it's something maybe I'll, I'll look into. Um, yeah, something like ten percent of new advanced degrees in the U.S. Black men only thirty percent of that. Yeah, thirty percent of new PhDs. That even sounds high. Thirty percent of that ten, right, 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 right. I see what you said. Right, 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 right. Uh, Byron Allen's last extortion attempt misusing black show. You know, I didn't catch the most most recent one. I know that he was uh, teamed up with um, um, one of these uh, black capitalist ventures. But yeah, Byron Allen ran a hustle. You know, I mean, he's. You know, I mean, this is this is. Uh, so I don't I don't know the latest on the the, the most recent one, but but uh, the one he ran with the cable channel piece was th- the funny thing for me was that the Supreme Court ruling. I remember reading it at the time said more or less that he wouldn't win his case uh, 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 claiming racism against Comcast um, 
because he couldn't prove that the provable denial of his or blockage of his products was based on racism. So f- from what I remember, the reading made it, 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 it made it almost impossible for someone to prove because you would have to have someone literally write down, you know, uh, you know, that th- th- there's, they would have, a white person would literally have to write on the piece of paper, I'm denying you because I am racist or I'm basing this on your blackness. Uh, but he had used publicly the whole thing. You know, we we talked about it for tonight's Renegade Culture a little bit. Uh, Spike Lee, what Spike Lee did with Malcolm X's the film Malcolm X, he draped himself in this this cloak of blackness, and then created a very white commercial product in the process. And that's what Byron Allen, I think, is 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 ultimately doing too. And it's the same kind of thing that many black commercial press folks do. In fact, I think it was something he was doing with Roland Martin. That they that they use the 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 very real obviously racism of our society to uh, carve off uh, uh, a relative you know uh, uh, for them relatively large amount of of reward while uh, providing for the rest of us nothing. So their approach is to say uh, black people are suffering. So give we the black business and media commercial class some of the money. And we will go to our community and basically uh, in- encourage them to 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 chill. He's suing McDonald's. I honestly and Roland Martin was excited. I'm sure. I'm sure. I I, I, I I'm not up on that one. I have to apologize. Uh, I'm not up on that one. Um, but um, Uh, I, 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 I'm sure it's a money grab. I have, I've actually never seen him do anything that was legitimately, you know, radically about the community. I mean, again, Byron Allen's commercial, you know, his, 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 his media product. I mean, what is, I mean, they're game shows and weather channels and, and cars. And I mean, he's not, he doesn't even produce, you know, when I used to talk to the founders of that hashtag movement, I, and, and, you know, I know that they were in touch with him. And I used to tell, I mean, the one time I spoke to, to one of the founders about it, I told, I suggested you should, you should get Byron Allen to fund your media operation. Maybe he did, <laughs> but, but at the time I was thinking, you know, if you're in touch with a black billionaire uh, who produces content of no value politically, he should at least fund, a, you create a well-funded YouTube channel that produces good black news. I mean, that would at this point be easy. We've done it with no billionaires. Look at the collective we put together here at BPM with no no money and certainly no billionaire support. Uh, largely through our handful of of contribution and and uh, your audience support. That's the only thing making this happen. And we're doing more in terms of. Um, honest, radical production of journalism and media content already. We're already doing more than I think uh, any funded operation for sure. I mean, there are others doing good work. Uh, uh, I'm not saying we're the only ones for sure, but 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 I don't see any commercially funded operation doing better than what we've done already. So, um, yeah, I'm, 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 that sounds about right for me. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. Right on. I appreciate it. It's one of my favorites. We're trying to, you know, I'm trying to keep up with the, with the Dr. CBS t-shirt game. Uh, it's rough. It's rough out here. Um, sure. Uh, sure. There are less, well, I'm sure there are tenured professors who produce less substantive work than Nicole Hannah Jones. Um, and there are a lot of tenured professors who produced far more substantive work than Nicole Hannah Jones, who would never be let near the New York Times. So, uh, and who would never be let near a five-year contract. At, I'm, sh- I, well, I don't know honestly, but I'm, I'm, I would guess would have to be a, a pretty hefty salary if she's going to stay there, and take it. Um, so, it, 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 it really does go both ways. And from my perspective. Uh, all due respect to the contributions of Gerald Horn, I don't see what the 1619 Project is doing as being 
amazingly uh, 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 radical or or uh, earth shattering. I'm so I'm you know again I'm not saying she doesn't deserve tenure just because I'm I don't think she's as radical as I would want her to be. But um, I'm not saying that she should automatically have gotten it either just because she did the 1619 project. I think that has to be understood in the context of that university, uh, what other faculty have had to do and uh, uh, what else she has done. I don't know. Honestly, I just don't know. I just want to caution against, you know, um, you know, I, I have no problem admitting this. I have already. A lot of this has to do with my own experience that that. Uh, uh, I'm, I am working on a long form project and eventually we, it will, uh, this story is going to all be laid out and many others that I'm collecting. But, but the, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a little bitter. I won't front. I'm a little bitter about my own experience and what I've seen some of my, my friends and comrades and colleagues have to suffer in, in academia. So, uh, 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 and what is often popularly represented is not happening, is not real. So um, anyway, uh, again, I don't wish her not to have tenure. I just don't think necessarily that we should just, you know. Um, 1619 Project is liberal response to capitalism and white supremacy controlling U.S. education specifically. I, I, I probably would agree with that. It's suspect at best that she props uh, figures like Lloyd as a moment for black progress. Ricky, who's what Lloyd are you talking about? What am I missing there? I missed something there. What, what, what's the Lloyd being? Uh, I honestly don't know. Um, uh, I was up until recently a paying member of the AAUP. And uh, I admit, you know, this may be, you know, this may be my own flaw here and I'm open to, I'll happily be criticized for this, but uh, I didn't feel like they were uh, able to do enough in, in, in the context of our situation at Morgan. I was a little frustrated. Um, so I don't know. Um, but honestly, I don't know. Oh, Lloyd Austin. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, wow. She did that. I remember that. Wow. Mm. Yeesh. Yikes. Oh, Eesh. yikes. Oh, I missed that. Uh, well, I forgot it. I may have caught it. In my, uh, that's a mess. That's a mess. Um, yeah, it isn't earth shaking. No, it, yeah, I mean, um, I mean, but this is, I mean, by the way, this is one of the issues that, 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 so what I'm I, I'm I'm doing is I, I don't know when it'll eventually come out or in what multi forms it'll come out, but I am I'm I'm currently trying to compile my own and and kept um uh compile the stories of faculty, staff, students, administrators who have worked or are currently working or have gone through the HBCU experience, and um uh. Issues of AAU, the AAUP, the the uh, uh, American Association of University Professors, by the way, uh, the of of unionization of faculty senates, uh, um, all are are already figuring prominently um, in in um, uh, these discussions so far. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, f how far we came, really? Mm -mm -mm. Absolutely. Uh, and in Maryland, we're not allowed to form a union <laughs> faculty. Um, so there, there have to be, uh, and we currently don't have a Senate at Morgan. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the university council is not, uh, is not, not that. So, 
Um, and absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the abuse of adjunct professors, the, the I mean, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of stuff that's 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 going on. Um, so that's why that's anyway, that's why I'm just saying that even again, even with whatever, whatever my political differences with with Nicole Hannah Jones might be. Uh, um, she may or may not deserve tenure or have may or may not have earned tenure, given the criteria or standards at, at that university. Um, You know what? I, I, let me just say this. Honestly, I don't even know how that would happen. I'll just say that. Uh, I, not that it can't, not that we shouldn't, not that that's not a, a laudable goal. I just don't know. I honestly don't know how that would happen. Um, I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that would, how that would work. Um, I think it's terminated. You know, somebody was asking me about exterminate all the brutes. Uh, I have not. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. You know, I heard. Um, I want to pull it up now that you mentioned that, uh, and and give them full credit. Um, and and I also want to get the professor's name right that they interview because uh she said something on here yeah uh so if you if 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 um one of the reasons that 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 was well one of the where I think I was got confirmation of why I don't want to see the film. I'm already, I've already said I'm against, I'm already over the, the, the trauma of, of all these, these kinds of films. But in this brilliant episode of millennials killing capitalism, uh, professor Zoe Samudzi, um, talks briefly about what will be her coming review of exterminate all the brutes. And, um, in her description of uh, of it, kind of was already confirming why I don't want to see it. Um, but I'm gonna let you go check that. I'm gonna let you you should go listen to that interview. Uh, it's brilliant on on many different levels. In fact, I should try to get her on here at some point. But uh, um, but anyway, segments documentary released by corporate media and how it represents their interest, thinking exterminates all the bruises and show how you watch about, uh, watch about the science scientists that was dropped. Yeah, I yeah I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, no, I don't have. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. Um, and uh, I yeah, I haven't seen it yet. But if if uh, but have you have you seen it? Are you saying that we should be discussing it? I don't know, man. I don't know. It was just meh. Um, Melinda, what interview are you talking about? Which interview? And what was... Wait, put a link... Oh, 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 okay. In the chat. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the link to the, um, yep, yep, I can do that. Yep. The link to the millennials are killing capitalism page is right there. And then you can go to, it's just the second one from the top. There's no such thing as a decolonized museum. By the way, she makes the point brilliantly that I've I've tried to make a while ago about why I wouldn't support hip hop going into the Smithsonian and why I was against um, uh, that whole black power uh, uh, thing at the Smithsonian some years ago that Peniel Joseph was putting together because, um, well, my version she does it much better, but my version is that that you know those are those are uh, where where. Um, colonial victories are entombed for presentation. Um, so it's like when people get conquered and they lose, that's they they get th their reward is is to be put up, held up like a medal or a trophy. So hip hop and black power, I think, have been crushed uh, at the moment. So that's why they're being put in museums. Um, 
<laughs> the phone link, the wait, the, the on my phone links in the chat don't work. Oh man. That, um all right, well, I'll put the uh uh I'll put that link in the show notes uh after we 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 wrap up here uh uh and then you can in which which probably be in a few minutes and then you can um uh get it there. Um but uh um it's behind a paywall. I heard it for free. Huh. Uh, yeah, Ninth Wonder was teaching last. I did hear. I don't know if he's still there. He was teaching hip hop at at at, at Harvard. Um, uh, wait, LL, wait, what was this? Uh, LL and Nat just did something regarding Hip Hop Museum. I saw a recognition of his influence, yeah. Yeah, I mean, LL has, you know, he's got the Hip Hop channel on XM now, and, um, you know, so a lot of, and obviously a lot of his own career is around the, 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 or a lot of what he benefits from to this day is the the dominant hip hop narrative that I think uh, again check out that other video and debate with Davy D even uh, that I think is flawed. Um, so they want to promote this idea that hip hop has changed the world and that being put in the museum is uh, um, you know the crowning victory. And Nas, yeah, Nas and Ninth Wonder were all up there. Right, I said Nat. I meant you. Right, you. Right, Nas. You're right. Uh, uh, Nas is up there or was up there. Um, but if you watch the, the Illmatic documentary at the end, when they show Nas going up to, uh, Skip Gates, Harvard program, there's, there's this part where, where there's a scene in the movie, in the documentary where, where they're showing you, uh, Nas's father's bookshelf that influenced him. And you see all those like Afrocentric uh, scholars and books. Then later you see him going to Harvard and being welcomed in by Skip Gates. And to me, that is the symbolic representation of what I'm describing here. Cause Skip Gates made his own career and only ended up at Harvard by disparaging and marginalizing those African centered scholars and juxtaposing himself against radical scholarship. So to see him welcoming Nas and Ninth Wonder and others into a hip hop program at Harvard is is again my point that this is the the imperial victory claiming the mantle and taking the 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 it, 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 it's 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 taking the victim as a trophy. I conquered Nas, and now Nas only wants to be here with me. And, and and is validated by being here with me. I mean, I hated that part. I hated that part of the, the documentary so much. And I think that's also why, uh, um, oh, wow, I missed that. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tef Poe was at Harvard? That's interesting. How did that, really? I'd have to, I'd be interested to hear about how that went. Nas talk shit about Zimbabwe. I missed that too. Anyway, mm. Mm. Um. Uh. Uh. But yeah. Anyway. So. So. You know. Um. By the way, I did say that to Amiri Baraka once when he was at the Smithsonian Joint with Peniel. We did try to tell him, "My man, why are you rocking with this dude? Why are you doing this? Hey, appreciate you again." Assess son, assess son, a son, a son, Murray, appreciate you. Um, yep, LL, LL Fool J, yeah, he's still around. He like, he runs the XM channel, uh, the throwback channel, which is which which um is actually pretty dope to me. I think they do a pretty good job in terms of commercial hip hop. Um, but yeah, he's still around, you know, making, making, you know, doing TV and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
you know. Amiri Baraka was and Sonia Sanchez were 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 invited by Peniel Joseph uh um and were supporters of Peniel Joseph um at the Smithsonian a few years ago. And that was the first time it was at the time where where I hadn't fully evolved I didn't really f- We already knew by then what Peniel was doing with 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 commercializing black power studies. And uh, we could see it even in the presentation. So when when when, you know, um, uh, when we saw uh, uh, Baraka and Sanchez there um, did try to have a, a brief word with him about it. And it was also where Peniel showed me uh, uh, in, in his attempt to to um, show me that I was wrong. He showed me what was then going to be the book where he went. He was uh, making the argument of. Um, something like from Barack, from Malcolm X to Barack Obama, and he had Obama and Malcolm on the cover. I forgot that book, but which, what the title was. But, And I was saying that is entirely disingenuous. Uh, you know, Obama is the antithesis of Malcolm X, the negation of Malcolm X. Uh, but anyway, but, but you know, honestly, I think, you know, this is actually another issue, I think, that is worthy of discussion at some point. I think there is a, a, a generational uh, um, issue where, Elders of a certain point, and I understand this, they want recognition on our and are appreciative of being recognized by scholars who are blowing up. And I think they are willing at times to miss or or overlook details in the argument in favor of the platform. And that's what I think was happening there. And I think uh, and I think Peniel took full advantage of it because uh, you know, if you can wrap yourself with Sonia Sanchez and Baraka and Mary Baraka, you can get away with a lot. And uh, and people then don't fully read or read closely the work and just assume that Peniel is uh, legit and right. And because he's well promoted and well paid and well quaffed, um, they assume that he's right. And then he ends up even on uh, uh, Aaron Monte's show, <laughs> where the alternative uh, white uh, uh, progressive community assumes the same thing, that he is correct and, and accurate. And, um, you know, so, by the way, I do want to acknowledge, I don't know how many likes we have, but please hit the like button. I, and I, I really appreciate uh that uh look i know it, it's beyond just just uh anything that 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 i or any of us individually are doing but i really appreciate the strong attendance this morning which i know is is be is, is largely the result of a remix morning show uh which will be back of course tuesday through thursday of next week i'm just trying to hold it down in the interim uh because again frankly this is my prime moment of the day this is the perfect time of the day for me and uh, uh, I honestly love that we're able to provide an alternative uh, public sphere for uh, uh, some morning news and conversation and even beyond, obviously, throughout the with the rest of the channel with all that's happening. Because uh, like mo- like all of you, I consume a lot of media and I see, you know, all of the holes and gaps. And I think we're doing a lot to fill at least a few of them. And so anyway, I just appreciate that we have this this uh, for what I think for us is a strong and consistent morning audience. I appreciate that. And uh, uh, for those who will be here later or see this in the replay, appreciate you. Any of you who got here a little late, please go back and review uh, what you missed and, and offer up a comment. Uh, even belatedly, because, of course, like my man over at Comedy Hype says, put it in the comments. We definitely want you to put it in the comments. Uh, and by the way, I do love that channel, man. I think we do a, a, a black radical version of what they do for black comedy over there. By the way, that's why I like to say I'm the I'm the black radical Pierre. I'm I am to to black uh, uh, radical media what Pierre is to black comedy. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, no doubt. This is not. I, I appreciate that, and I'm in no way meaning to to disparage Amiri Baraka uh, uh, or Sonia Sanchez. Not at all. I'm. Uh, in fact, I was trying to say, um, 
you know, I was just like, it's just unfortunate. Uh, and it's just one of those things where uh, we, 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 all of us, I mean, myself included, you know, we get an invitation, we get excited. We want to be appreciated. We want particularly younger people, I think, to, to, to invite us into their circles to offer, you know, what we can to help them. And we don't always catch exactly who's inviting us. So if you are, and look, I mean, you know, we got to be real. Amiri Baraka was not properly treated at the end of his life. Black people institutionally did not, you know, hold him up properly. People in positions to hire and fund him didn't do what they should have done. Uh, so if a young up and coming superstar scholar is writing about you and praising you, at least, you know, claiming to praise you, uh, and inviting you places. And, and, you know, of course it, it, I think it's easy, uh, or potentially possible to miss something. I will say, it, you know, Barack and I, you know, like he got on us on our, uh, well, for me is my famous radio show where he came on and, 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 and before Obama's election in, in 07, 08, and was not at all happy that I disagreed with supporting Obama. Uh, I'll say also, we didn't get into this fully in the Renegade Culture Show that's gonna air tonight, but at the 2004 Hip Hop National Political Convention, it was a Mary Baraka that was telling us that we had to support John Kerry. And I was like, hell no, hell no. I was like, we are supposed to be gathering here to form our own political party, or at least our own block with our own platform, not voting for Dago and John Kerry. So my point in all that is that that we can disagree, and at some points, I would like to suggest that even our greatest can can be mistaken. Uh, you know, yeah, I can't help it, man. The dude is so. The dude is so, and he and he he was he was so. Uh, uh. Like if you go back and hear our debate, you know, off the air, he said. You know, brother, we don't have many black men that have PhDs. So when we go on the air, please refer to me as Dr. Joseph. I said, sure, no problem. And in the whole hour long debate, he called me Jared. And I let it go. I let it go because I didn't want to get sidetracked during the debate. <laughs> but that little stuff, boy, I tell you, boy, I tell you, boy, I feel like getting in my Kwame Brown bag when it comes to Peniel Joseph. I feel like getting in my truck and <laughs> get on my tractor and get my Kwame Brown going on Peniel, boy. That's what I'm you know, saying. Like, what? <laughs> no, I'm just... Yeah, he did. 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 It was funny, though. It was funny. Anyway, um, I know, but not in that context. Not when the agreement is we're not using first names because we respect the few of us that got a PhD. And if I'm calling you Dr. Joseph, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, but I know I don't like, yeah. I, again, my joke is still go. I only like to anyone to remember the PhD because I'm still paying for it. But if we agree that we're going to call each other doctor on a show, then then you start calling me Jared. Yeah, I'll never forget that. He got me on that one. That was slick. That was slick. I mean, honestly, he got me on a number of things. I mean, because he continues to be able to present himself uh, uh, as a legit representative of black power history. And, and you know, my little attempts at intervention to have not worked. And again, the point I was getting at with Aaron Mate, whose work I really respect, is that how, you know, you do all this Russiagate work and, and it would be like me in, inviting on uh, uh, Rachel Maddow to talk about Russiagate. You interviewing Peniel Joseph about black power is like me interviewing uh, 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 Rachel Maddow about Russia. Uh, but he just, he, he screenshotted me that Gerald Horn blurb in Peniel's book and was like, if Horn thinks it's good, who are you? He didn't say it like that, but basically that's what he was saying. And he's right. And that's the beautiful hustle. Peniel got a Dr. Horn blurb and it shuts down so much and a Robin Kelly blurb. So what am I, what is little Jared going to do if you got that? 
Now I'm right. And my essay criticizing his book is right. And no one will go out there and say what I said is wrong, but it don't matter. It's slick. It's slick, man. It's slick. It's slick. It's slick. It's slick. That's why I can't win hater. I got to be more ruthless. You're right. I, I got to be more ruthless. I haven't earned the hater of the year award. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So, you know, anyway, um, Listen, let me just say again, I, I, again, how much I appreciate you all coming through this morning. And I want to say that it's, it's a pleasure for me to hold it down until the remix crew can come back and to get our dope Fridays here at Black Power Media started off. Uh, uh, and there's a lot. And please, like, I think, you know, um, we could all I think we've all probably missed a few of the great uh, uh, offerings on this channel. Uh, please go back and check out Real Talk with Dr. Sundiata Chajua if you've missed any of those episodes uh, and more are coming. Please go check out the the, the newly uploaded Black Myths podcast. Uh, we really appreciate them coming, you know, joining up. Um, please make sure you've caught up on, on all those Riot Starter interviews, uh, which I think are, are amazing in their uniqueness, if nothing else. I mean, look who he's talking to. Who, who else is talking to these folks? Um, uh, and anything else. I mean, you know, I've done some pretty dope, you know, programs, you know, that you might've missed. Go back and check those. I know you haven't missed any of the last dope intellectuals. That would just be silly on your part. So please, you know, correct that. Uh, and check out one of those remixes. If you, if you, if you've missed any, we, we did it. We, we put in some work, a lot of gems in those joints, a lot of incredible contributions from a really amazing team. I'm not, I can't front. I'm really excited about what's happening here. And appreciative of all the people that are involved, and I think it's it's crazy, uh, um, uh, just how how uh, what we pulled together in a relatively short period of time and with no resources, uh, or I, well, I mean, a minimum amount of resources that that um, you know are largely uh, coming from us and from you, uh, your viewership. Your liking, sharing, subscribing, even commenting, all of that helps drive the channel. So we really appreciate it. Uh, even the people that come through and hit the thumbs down every once in a while. And for what I'm seeing here, 147 watching, 134 likes and no thumbs down. That's pretty dope. Right on. Appreciate you. Um, and then, of course, 5 o'clock p.m., 5 or 5.30, Lukeman Nation. 7 p.m., The Last Dope Intellectual. 9 p.m., Renegade Culture. Sunday. Of course, Sundays. Sunday nights at 8 p.m. with the Ear Doctor. You don't want to miss. Get that good hour of, of, of spinning. But Sunday morning, please, members only, please consider joining up if you haven't already. And do not miss this. Uh... I mean, these are the conversations that I only would have wanted to, to create this channel, you know, participate to create this channel for in the first place. Like all this other stuff is just gravy. But that it, that that we are going to have Daruba bin Wahad, Blood McCreary. And if you haven't heard from Blood, oh, my goodness, Lord, Claude, have mercy. And say Kuo Dinga. I'm trying to keep it cool right now. Do you do you really understand what's happening? Do you all understand what's about to go down here Sunday morning? I don't I feel like I feel like I feel like I'm not sure we fully appreciate yet what's about to happen here Sunday morning. So please join up and get your friends and your family and your foes and your comrades and your confidants. Uh, and, and get on that one. Good Lord. And that's just going to be part one. We had Jaleel Muntakeen on the remix the other day. He gave his first interview to Renegade Culture uh, coming out of prison a couple months ago. Hey, I hear you. Right on. Right on. Um, 
you don't eat well subscribe is, is separate from joining so you want to hit the subscribe button so, and then hit the bell so you don't miss anything when 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 we at the channel uh publish something but you want to hit the join button to be it should be a, a blue join button that you see uh to become a member uh which is 4.99 a month uh but as anyone can attest all of that money goes to expanding the channel we just we we you know uh hiring uh, some production help, editing help, hiring some uh, research, looking to expand to hire uh, investigative journalists. In fact, I don't know exactly where we are with this, but if folks are interested or know people who want to do that kind of work, please go to blackpowermedia.org and fill out the contact form and let us know because uh, that's on its way. Uh, the the um the contributors to the channel do earn a small amount of money and percentages of the contributions for all of their work and including we the ownership but uh i i think i can say you know without uh that that none of the ownership is is taking any money is taking any of the the percentage salary um uh at least through the first quarter uh, so that we can just help this thing grow, and and even then, nobody is, you know, it's 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 more. I would suggest more nominal, just to 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 appreciate people's work. To say, here's a few dollars of what we 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 collectively generate uh, for everyone, uh, but a bulk of what's what's generated goes back to the channel, so we can keep expanding. So this is not nobody's in here to make money. Nobody's in here to, is doing this to for any individual, whatever. So uh, we are living our collective principles uh, uh, to the fullest. And um, so when you support, you don't have to worry about feeling like, you know, you just, you know, you know, padding someone's pockets. Uh, um, what you're getting. Uh, and then there's a lot of stuff. I don't know. I, I can't say, honestly, that what we're doing or I don't feel like I can. I'm not. I can't yet. Only because this thing, I mean, anyway, we're supporting those that we, anyway, the, 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 nobody's padding their personal pockets. We're, we're, we are redistributionists to the fullest. And, and I think I, I'll have to just, you know, beyond the specifics of the, the, the channel organization, which has largely been made public already, there's, you know, you know, you know, um, but we're trying to help those that need it. And deserve it that's really the point so so uh if you can hit the the join button and then join us live for the members only and now if you're a patreon member already and those are unfortunately we can't sync those so if you're a patreon member through blackpowermedia.org and we encourage that as well um you will get access to the members only video the very next day uh so as a small uh you know try to you know um we can't, we're not allowed actually to, we don't have the ability to have Patreon members count as YouTube channel members to join the, the live live. So um, maybe there's a way to become a member and moderate what you give via Patreon if you need to, or good, but through both if you can, but or, uh, um, so that you can become a member of the channel and still support through Patreon. Uh, but either way, you'll get the video the very next day uh, and be able to see it uh, through Patreon. Then. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that answers that question. And thank you to uh, uh, Jason. Am I saying that correctly? Jason White for becoming a member. Why isn't it? I don't know why it's not showing up, but uh, appreciate you, Braithwaite Have a viewer call in segment. I was trying to do that now. I don't know. I mean, actually. How do you do a viewer call-in segment? Just invite you to the screen. Uh, I was trying to do a version of that with the chat at least now, but um, if there's another way of doing it that's more slick, maybe to, I'm not up on everything. And why isn't the member thing popping up? Anyway, I wanted to shout out Jason White. Appreciate you. I see you. Uh, No, not quite a worker co-op. I mean, well, I mean, I guess in effect we are. I mean, everybody who contributes to the channel um, gets uh, a percentage of what the channel 
I'm forgetting the exact language, but but the everybody who contributes gets a percentage of what the channel generates. Um, so uh, um, uh, anyway, there's there we go. Jason White, thank you very much for becoming a member. Appreciate appreciate you. It's all good. If you can't look financially, look, if you can't give financially the, the way another way simply to give that actually is in some ways is giving financially is to um, uh, like, share, subscribe. All of that is free. Uh, encourage more views. Watch the videos doing all of that you know through with whether it's ad revenue or just algorithmically pushing the videos it, it it helps the channel so uh we get it not everybody can give more and we we appreciate what you all do uh no doubt mukasa was on i mean you know you know what i'm saying you know like like where these you know anyway uh and and honestly between K kalanji and kamal more than uh, more than me and then me you know um uh you know you know, uh, supplementing that a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of contact and experience with that with that um, a generation of activists and scholars and 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 political prisoners, etc. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's a stronger collective, at least, with with those ties than we have here. Um, hey, at least Ren donated you know, chipped in last time was paying a little bit for the hate. So we appreciate that. I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what the, what, 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 what the trolling purpose is, what they hope to, you know, there we go. Boondockers made it right on, right on. Good looking out. Uh, appreciate you. Franny French, right on, right on. Uh, uh, you might be the only French we like around here. It's like, <laughs> just play it. Uh, but we appreciate you. Thank you very much for sure. Uh, um, for your support, uh, and uh, I, I don't think I missed anything in terms of what's coming up on the channel um, today and uh, over the next couple of days. Oh, I did. I forgot one big one. How could I do that? Let me once again, everybody, I can't praise her enough, not only for her body of uh, scholarship, but for her off the record contribution and behavior, which is as principled as I've ever seen or experienced personally. Uh, Dr. Joy James, who is largely responsible for putting together uh, the June 12th summit for accountability and social movements that i will be co-hosting with her here live uh 2 to 4 p.m eastern sunday i believe that's sunday june 12th so please uh do uh make a note of that and come on through you can see uh at least some of those who will be participating on that day daruba bin wahad members of uh, the BLM 10, uh, Felix Crittenden from Louisville, Kentucky, Bianca Jamar, uh, the uh, 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 2016 Women's March, uh, one of the co-conveners of that, Dorothy Holmes, uh, Chicago mother and activist. Um, uh, you know, again, what this is largely involving are mothers uh, of uh, uh, people killed by police, um, and uh, people who do political activism around police violence and, and uh, general the struggles in the black community who are concerned about how their work is being co-opted uh, and uh, um, corrupted. And so this is, I think, an important uh, summit, and uh, we encourage you all to make sure you are on hand, if at all possible, for that. So... Yeah, uh, if I understand, yeah, Ricky, this is something that's been being worked on for a while, and what I think it is, uh, and 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 I'm sure we'll get. In fact, uh, Dr. James is going to join me. Uh, I think is it next week? I think it's next week, maybe the week after. 
But in advance of the event, she'll be joining me here to talk about uh, more of the, the the background. But but it has been being planned. She's been working on it, uh, and I and others to a lesser extent for a while now, a, a few weeks at least, and she much longer, if I'm not mistaken. But it goes back, uh, I think, most immediately to the that latest uh, round between um, Tamika Mallory and Samaria Rice. Uh, sort of brought uh, to 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 a, a new head, so to speak. The the some of these concerns. So some of the people with whom Dr. James uh, was already working uh, wanted to 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 put this together. And I and I don't mind saying, and I'm actually proud to say that um, Dr. James, being appreciative of what we're doing here and other uh, efforts within Black radical media throughout the country w thought that we would be a, a good place for this to take place. So again, this is you know why we wanted to put this channel together uh, and for exactly the kind of work that, that, that um, uh, you know, we want to do. Welcome, Troy. We appreciate you. Good looking out. Um, and you know what, Ren? I think I'm about good, man. You know, Black Power is going quite fine. You know what I mean? We're doing quite fine. And and with less involvement of you, I think we'll be doing even better. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and ask you to dip on out. Um, we we have a we we already agreed on the channel. We're not doing trolls and and you know uh, all due respect to those of Alabama. Uh, my 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 Bama tolerance is low, so not the, the the good people of Alabama, so to speak. But anyway, maybe I need to come up. That's an old fashioned uh, derision. Uh, but anyway, so you anyway that you know, Ren will have to come up with a new um, you know account and name and uh, come back uh, under a new uh, title if if they want to continue to to in invade the space here uh we are here for discussion and debate within a certain range not to accept trolls and uh um, unwarranted hostility so uh peace to you Ren and black power will keep continue moving on just fine thank you very much thank you very much um all right, good people, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. I really, again, appreciate you coming through. I hope our discussion of the reparations issue was uh, of, of some value. I look forward to hearing uh, any other comments or critiques about that as well. Uh, again, stick around Friday uh, uh, for Dope Fridays all day. And I don't mind even say, you know, because she works with us. Uh, um, when you get time, you know, uh, Burn It Down with Kim Brown goes live, I believe, at 5 o'clock. Uh, so... You know, if uh, um, do what you need to do to to support all of these shows live or in the replay. But uh, uh, we certainly appreciate her coming through and joining us uh, on the remix. And we certainly appreciate uh, her work with Burn It Down. So um, and to her whole crew there. So uh, support all of that. And uh, we'll be back Monday morning. I'll be back with more I Mix What I Like live and with uh, hopefully some special guests and other uh, a good discussion and hopefully all of you and more. And then, of course, Remix will be back Tuesday morning for our Monday morning uh, Remix morning show <laughs> starting next week. So, uh, again, thanks, everybody, for coming through. Really appreciate you continued support. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all in the chat later and throughout the evening here on Black Power Media. And as always, as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody. And if you missed anything, if I missed anything, make sure you do like my man Pierre says. And Put it in the comments. And we'll catch you next time here at I Mix What I Like live in Black Power Media. Peace, everybody. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.